Tomorrow in Madison will be the first time lawmakers hear from the public on the legislative redistricting maps. Republican Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says he expects the maps to be approved by the legislature before it ends the fall session on November 11th. However, Governor Evers is expected to veto it. Now, the outcome could have major implications on the value of your vote and who you're represented by. State and federal lawsuits have already been filed due to the presumption that the Republican-controlled legislature and Governor Tony Evers will not be able to agree on the new maps. Ben Jordan goes 360 to explain this complicated and controversial issue by hearing from several different stakeholders. Democrats believe the maps need to be redrawn in a nonpartisan way, unlike 2011 when Republicans controlled the entire process. Meanwhile, Republicans are pushing to keep the maps nearly identical to hold on to their majority and political power. Every 10 years, states redraw their legislative and congressional districts using the latest U.S. Census Bureau data to balance the population. That way, each district has about the same number of voters, meaning each vote carries the same weight. To explain how the process works and why it's controversial, let's go 360. We'll hear from a Democrat who believes the current maps disenfranchise voters, a Republican who thinks the new maps should have little to no changes, the chairman of a nonpartisan commission assigned by Governor Evers to draw fair maps, and a political science expert who offers a neutral perspective on what's to come. Cheryl Moranto is a Democrat who's a member of the League of Women Voters of Wisconsin and the Fair Maps Coalition. She believes the maps drawn and approved by Republicans in 2011 give them an unfair advantage that is seen in the makeup of the state legislature today. In a purple state, where statewide elections are often a 50-50 split, Republicans hold 64 percent of the state's Senate seats and 61 percent in the Assembly. They can afford to ignore us because they're in safe districts. Um, so you can have a situation where your vote counts, but it doesn't really count. Democrats want a nonpartisan commission to be in charge of redrawing the maps. A 2019 Marquette Law School poll found that 72 percent of voters, including 63 percent of Republican voters, agree. What we um, in the Fair Maps Coalition are arguing is that because the current maps were so partisanly gerrymandered that we really need to take a fresh look. GOP lawmakers disagree and are pulling in the opposite direction. The Wisconsin Senate approved a resolution in late September calling for the new district maps to remain as close as possible to the existing ones. It passed along party lines with only Republicans in favor. The idea is that we want to minimize the number of people whose representative changes after redistricting such that they are now being represented by a person who they don't know and they don't have any relationship with. Rick Essenberg is a Republican and the president of the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. Rick says Republicans have a natural advantage when it comes to geographic districts because they are more evenly spread throughout the state, whereas a majority of Democrats are densely located in larger cities. I think we sometimes overestimate the ability of politicians to draw maps that favor them. Nearly two years ago, Governor Evers signed an executive order forming a nonpartisan group called the People's Maps Commission. Independent judges selected the members who have not been involved in politics, like Chairman Chris Ford, an emergency physician who lives in Whitefish Bay. We're not professionals in, in line drawing. We're not professionals in redistricting. Um, however, we are doing what the people of Wisconsin have stated that they wanted, and that's fair maps that they can feel as though they're represented. The People's Maps Commission released three versions of their congressional and legislative maps in October. There are some areas with significant changes compared to the current version. We've been able to produce maps that have been objectively more fair. John Johnson is a research associate at Marquette Law School. He's assigned to study Wisconsin's redistricting process and the best ways to draw the maps impartially. Under a more neutrally drawn map, Democrats would still need to win more than a narrow statewide victory in order to get a majority of either house in the legislature but they would win incrementally more seats as their majority across the state increased. Johnson says it's almost a certainty at this point that Wisconsin's redistricting process will wind up being done by a federal court. 
something that's happened several times in the past when Wisconsin's government was divided as it is today. It's really hard to imagine this legislature and this governor agreeing on a mapping scheme, and so it will go to the courts. And uh, most people I've talked to believe that the uh, People's Map Commission that Tony Evers established was a sort of bid to create a set of maps that maybe uh, the courts would take as their basis when they when they end up drawing this. But everybody I know has expected for years that this would end up in the court system. The redistricting process is supposed to be completed by March, which would be after the spring primary and before the spring election. Reporting in Milwaukee, Ben Jordan, TMJ4 News. Well, we have gone 360 on several other topics, including the investigations into the 2020 presidential election in Wisconsin. Head to TMJ4.com slash 360 now to watch.